Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is from the creators of Herbaceous, Steve Finn, Eduardo Brath, and Beth Sorbel by Pencil First Games, and that is Herbaceous Sprouts. Herbaceous Sprouts is a similar game for one to four players, about 45 minutes to play, and about ages eight in order to play the game. In this game, you're gonna be playing as gardeners. We're making a community garden of sprouts. You're gonna be using similar cards as well as dice in the game. You're gonna be using things for, for bay leaf, lavender, forget me, Knots, Panny, Black Eyed Susan, Saffrons, Tarragon, and Rosemary, and you're going to be trying to create sets in order to create things down onto this board. You'll be taking dice from a bag and rolling them and then using them based on the cards they have in play to try and create unique garden aspects. Every time you place the, um, the dice down to create something new, you can create uh, separate pairs, you can create separate cards, you can do a bunch of other stuff as well. It's got a whole full board here, unlike the original game, and then you also have a unique aspect which is the computer player the computer is actually going to be creating its own little bits and pieces into the garden or I guess weeds so to speak and you're there, they're gonna cover up the garden as well and you want to try and put your pieces down as fast as you can before that happens and whoever has the most points at the end of the game is going to be the winner all right let's go ahead and check out this game so here we have the game herbaceous sprouts and as you can see it comes with a bunch of different stuff here. First of all, let's go ahead and talk about the contents. You're going to have these cards here, which are basically just informational cards to talk about the different types of uh, plants here that you're going to be trying to garden in this community garden here. You've got these single player cards here, which you can use for a one player game. You've got the green thumb expansion pack. You've got player boards. You've got the dice and a die bag. You've got the cards, which are the garden cards we'll be using throughout the game. You've got these little cards here, player reference cards to be used. And of course, lemonade, much like the original herbaceous game in which you're going to get the this card if you put a if you plant one in each of the different gardens here there's four different areas here on the board as you can see and if you're able to plant one in each of these areas you'll get this and it'll just score you some bonus points however the computer player might do that and if that happens the computer will score it and it'll be removed there's four players in the game but we got ahead and set for three players here this is flipped to the face face down modes because we're not going to be using this one here each player is going to start with two die you're simply going to put all the die in the bag you're going to shuffle them up and then you're going to pull two out and roll them and then you're going to put them on the board which we've already gone ahead and done so now what's interesting about this game here is you're also going to get not only just the different herbs, but you're also going to get flowers. And you can plant flowers on the board in these locations here. Uh, the first location is going to start with the highest amount of points, and it's going to go down as you plant more. And uh, of course, you're going to be able to ha you're going to have to need this little sh shovel here, in or, or this little. Um, Thing here in order to plant one flower into a garden. So you have to have this and one of these, which could be on a die facing or even a card. Next thing you're going to do after you've got ahead and done the setup, you can take these away. You can use the expansion or not. You move away the solo player since we're playing three player games. And then you can set these to the side. You won't really need them as well. Put the die bag over here and make sure everybody has their own unique area, as well as making sure each player is going to get their own color. So this guy can be red, this guy can be green, and this guy can be blue. We won't be playing with the yellow, so we can move that aside as well. Now, as you can see, oh, actually, sorry, it shows the colors here. I lied. It shows the colors on the board, which is actually nice. So this guy's red over here, and then we have the green, which is going to be over here. Okay, so now we've got everybody has all the different herb tokens here. We'll be using to put them down on the board for points. And depending on the number of players, so how many rounds the game's going to be, in a three-player game, it's nine rounds, and you're going to take these cards here, and based on the number of players, plus one is going to be how many cards are going to be set up so that you can see them on the field. Here we go. This is going to be four cards. And then you're going to, once you've placed these guys down, you're going to take the number of die based on these cards and roll them. So one for here, and we're going to go ahead and roll that guy and put him here. One more. Uh, this one right here. Three over here. Let's take three out. One, two, and three. Roll that there and place it down here. And finally, this one right here. Roll two and put them on here. Now, these are the uh, herbs and or flowers you're going to be getting. There's different sides in all the die. Some of them are going to have wilds. Others are going to have flowers. And sometimes you probably have some kind of ability. Uh, like this one right here is a little punchy symbol, which says you can go ahead and re-roll a die. And, of course, the cards not only have their die on them, but they also have the different abilities on them. And the abilities are listed down on every single player board. As you can see, this uh, little, uh, little, I guess, little glove here is re-roll one die. This bag here is draw and roll one from the bag. This one here is to turn a die to any other face. And then let's plant flowers, trade two identical seeds uh, to plant a flower, and then to save and use as a seed for later. These are the seeds for later, so you would get these. You'd also get these from this card. Um, 
and as you can see, you get these specific dice here. That's pretty nice. You're also going to get these ones over here, if you, you could choose these ones here. So basically, the first player is going to go, maybe we'll start with uh, red here, and he's going to select any of these he wants, so he'll go ahead and pick this card here. And you can only have a max of seven of the different uh, herbs on the card or flowers, and you can go ahead and put this there. That's an action you could choose to use. If you don't want to use it, you're simply going to discard it, but if you do, you can play it. Uh, and then, of course, uh, and there's a little gamepad here which tells you, so deal out everything, uh, pick and plant the sprouts. So you take a tool card uh, with seed dice, if any, and then add seeds to your wheelbarrow, which we just did. And then you go ahead and perform the tool action if you desire to do, which is this tool action here. So maybe he'll want to use this and burn this. And you can simply plant a flower. You're going to put it there. That's going to give him four points at the end of the game. And then after you go ahead and do that, you can discard down to seven dice. Uh, so if you have more than seven, you discard down here. And then plant seeds into one garden if you desire. Now, all the gardens have different requirements. This one is for planting the flowers. This one is for different, not the same types of, um, of seeds. This is for all the same and this is for pears that are not the same so in this instance if he wanted to plant he could simply plant uh, this is either wild see this is a wild here so you can make these two a pair and this a pair and that would be two pairs so you go ahead and say okay that's two pairs and you could take one of these and plant it right there to end your turn or you could have four different types if you wanted because of the wild so you could plant right here for four different types or you could simply choose to pass or uh, all the same. So you can actually choose all three of these. Three of the same will give you four points. But I think what gives him the most points is uh, two pairs. So he'll put that up. These two will be discarded. They're going to go into the bag here. And then, of course, the next player is going to get to go. So if this player went to go next, he would get to select any of these he wants. Maybe he'll choose this one here. He'll take this watering can if he wants. He can trade two identical seeds uh, to plant a flower, but he doesn't have two identical seeds, so this is going to burn. Uh, then he wants to save these. He'll use these for later. Um, of course, he has this ability where he can actually re-roll a die if he wants. Uh, and then uh, after that, he's going to go ahead and pass his turn. He doesn't want to play anything on the board here. Um, and then we're going to go to the next player here. The next player is going to select one of these guys here. He'll take maybe this one here. This is also going to be something he gets to keep for later. And uh, he's also got this little bag here, which you can choose to, or this little thing here you can choose to re-roll. He'll choose to re-roll this one right here. Bam, that's going to give him that. That's pretty good. So now he's got a pair here, and he's got three different types. If he wants, he can get rid of these guys and get three points. Points, or he can choose to end his turn if he'd like. Remember, this is going to be saved and he can use this for later. Now, after everybody has chosen one of the cards, there's going to be one left over. And that is going to be the computer that gets to... Uh gets to take this one. So this is going to be removed. And the bottom here is going to say what the computer does. And it says to put a weed in the two slot of this specific location. So here we'll look at the two slot and we're going to go ahead and put one of these weeds here, which is going to block the ability for you to get a point. So that can be nasty. Now, of course, if the computer manages to get one in each of these different spots, he's going to take the lemonade. And if a player does, so the, the, the uh, pink's already got one here. If he can get one here and here and here, he's going to get two points here. And if not, then it's going to burn. And of course, after this is done, you're going to then go ahead to go to the next round. You're going to take out more cards. You're going to roll more dice and the game is going to continue. Now, as you can see, there's different abilities. Some of them have two abilities, some of them have two dice, one die. It all depends on what you're looking for. Of course, the flower is going to be able to give you points as well if you want. And and uh, yeah, he's going to try and score points. After the ninth round, you're going to look at the board here and see who has the most points based on where all their locations are, as well as any other bonus points that might have uh, accrued. And of course, there's a special little bonus deck here, which says to grow a more challenging game, add these four uh, green thumb cards into the deck, and uh, they'll do different things. Uh, that is the basic aspect of the game Herbaceous Sprouts, not including the little solo mode here. Let's go ahead and talk about what I think about it. So a couple caveats before we get into the review. Now, first of all, I put one of the die as a flower on the board instead of actually putting Pink's little token on there for the sunflower. Make sure you put your tokens on the board. It's important because that's how you're going to score points. You want to put the die back into the bag. Also, there's nine of these black die here, and they're all going to have flowers, different flowers on their sides. You're going to be wanting to roll those guys in order to get the flowers that you need in order to score points throughout the game by using that trowel. Not only that, but there's also three additional die, which are these guys here, red, yellow, and blue. Red is going to give you a re-rolling ability, uh, yellow is going to give you the trowel ability, so you can plant those flowers, and then the blue one has the wild ability, which means you can choose whatever uh, seed you want to choose. Um, and that's the basic aspect of the game. You're going to be drafting cards, pulling them, and uh, placing them onto your board. You can only put seven seeds total, and after that you have to discard, and you'll also be able to use the abilities. The cards are going to burn if you 
you don't use the abilities. However, the ones that will stay are the ones that have the special unique little uh, pot symbol that's going to indicate what it is. It could be a flower or an herb. Just depends. And of course, finally, the ability to uh, add these additional cards into the deck if you want. It kind of has the same similar feeling to Herbaceous where you can add a little bit of that flavor pack in. It has that little aspect to it, a little mini expansion, which is nice. And of course, some of the things are just these guys here, references to the different types of flowers, which is also nice. I think that makes a nice little added aspect of the theme. In the game, you're building a community garden, but your objective is to score more points than your opponents. And as the game goes on, the computer player or the, the weeds are going to grow throughout the garden, and it's going to stop little spaces. It's going to block those spaces. If it can't block, it's just going to get discarded. And of course, you're going to try and want to avert that by picking the best ones for you and also the best ones to guarantee that the computer does not screw around. Um, and that's the basic aspect. So let's go ahead and get into the review of Herbaceous Sprouts. Well, first of all, this game I thought was actually going to be a smaller game than Herbaceous because it was titled Sprouts. It's not. It's bigger. And it has a bunch of dice. Uh, the game is still randomized as far as how the dice are rolling, but there's a lot of choice in the game. You're going to be doing the drafting aspect. And even if you get the things you don't want to get, you'll have the ability to use dice like this one here to re-roll dice that you don't want to things you do want. And of course, in Herbaceous Sprouts, uh, it has the same three things as Herbaceous does, where it's you got pears, you got the same type, and you got uh, completely different types. And it adds a little aspect of flowers. Flowers are super cool because it can score you a bunch of points and you can gain them, but you have to make sure that you're doing the right thing when you're pulling the different cards. You don't want to get fully flowers. You want to get a plethora of different types of things. Of course, the more pairs you get, the more likely you're going to score more points, the more different cards, and of course, the more of the same card. This is going to score you a bunch of points if you can do that. Sometimes it's best to go ahead and wait a round or two to get the best possible weir value you possibly can. Uh, these scoreboard trackers are beautiful. They're nice. Everything I get about this game is beautiful. I love Herbaceous. I'm a big fan of it. I think the Pencil First does a great job on their games, and this one is no exception to that rule. This has an immaculate uh, aspect to it. All of the different uh, cards are really nice, really easy to understand. Once you play this game, once you're going to understand how to completely play it. If you like Herbaceous, this is definitely a game I would suggest to you. It is different. It is unique enough, but it has that herbaceous feel to it. It definitely feels like you're trying to do the little set collection, placing stuff into the gardens. It's uh, probably a little bit of a longer game than herbaceous is, but that's good in my opinion. I like the fact that I can choose between the two when it comes to, oh, we want to play a set collection style game. It is still competitive, but it adds that unique little computer player aspect to it. Really, really fun. Uh, there's not a lot I can say as far as negative goes in this game. I think it's a little bit of a take that aspect. You can kind of put stuff onto the board where, uh, you know, maybe I want to place there, but you did it instead, and that can frustrate some people, but it's so minimal. The game's so lighthearted and fresh and fun. I think you guys are really, really going to enjoy this game. Um, it's been a while, but I'm going to give this game my stamp of approval. This game is excellent in pretty much all ways. Definitely check out Herbaceous Sprouts in the description below. It's currently on Kickstarter if you're interested. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out our sub videos. If you're new to like, subscribe, and comment, please subscribe. It does help so much. We greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out Herbaceous Sprouts currently on Kickstarter. It's if you like Herbaceous, this is a game that you it's a must get. It's it works just as it has some so much similarity, but so much difference as well. And it's random in all of the good ways games need to be random because it gives you so much choice in the randomness that it provides. And adding that computer aspect, the weeds in the garden, it's so thematic. I, can't, I just, I gotta stop singing its praises. I enjoy it, okay? Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more if you're interested in that kind of stuff, as well as if you're an artist and you wanna be put on the page, we'd be glad to sponsor you, uh, have you guys be able to collaborate with other game designers, and maybe make a little bit, a little bit of commission on the side as well. Also, go ahead and check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek, two great sites with tons of board, uh, board game giveaways and reviews slash blog posts. All right, guys, that's all I got for this one. And as always, I look forward to planting you later.